Hello girls and boys, welcome to our next science lesson. Now I understand you guys have been fairly busy uh, watering and looking after your broad bean this week and I've already seen some pictures of some of them, of some of them, so I hope uh, yours is doing okay. If your broad bean from last week isn't doing so well, don't worry, not everyone's is going to grow, but that's okay. We should get enough growing that we can do this pretty well. So, um, boys and girls, you will need your booklet again for today's lesson. Uh, and in your booklet, we are going to go down um, and start with this uh, part that we did last week where we were keeping our little journal, our little um, diary of how your broad bean is growing. Now, last week, you should have drawn your broad bean in this week five section. And it should look something like this. This is the one I did last week. Okay, I um, drew uh, how it was when I put it in the cup. You can see it hadn't started to grow yet or anything, but I had labeled it and all of that. So it should be, uh, you know, something along those lines. Accurate and careful as possible. So this week, you're going to have to pull out your cup again. Hopefully you've been watering and looking after it and you'll draw what it looks like again. So this time it should look different. It should have started to sprout. It has started to germinate, which means you should see the roots starting to come out and possibly even some of the leaves. Okay, now draw what you've got. If yours is um, only growing a little bit, that's fine. If yours is growing a lot, also fine. If yours, however, is just not growing at all, like if it's died or if it's just not moved, then in that case, you can use the picture of mine if you'd prefer. I'll actually put a picture up here. Uh, here's one. Uh, not that one. This one. Okay, yes. Here's my one. It's actually been growing quite well. Okay. I did mine a, a day earlier than yours, so mine will be a little bit bigger than what you guys had. But you can see here we have the root coming right down and I can actually see the actual uh, leaf in the stem here starting to come out of the broad bean. Okay, so if you need to, you can draw my one here that's on the screen. That's fine, otherwise do your own. Okay, now remember this is a labeled diagram. So when you draw it, actually um, label what these things are. So this part here that is the root, actually draw a line off it and label it root, okay? There's a, a leaf here, okay? You can label that, and you can actually even see a bit of the stem here as well. So you could also label the stem also. Now, yours will look a bit different to mine, so I want you to actually draw it however it actually is. For example, if your root is going around the back and coming out this side, then draw that. If yours is wrapping around the top here, draw that. So draw it however it looks, okay? and if yours is no good, then feel free to draw mine here. That's no troubles. This is the one I'll be showing you each week. Okay, so um, uh, going quite well. I like how um, we do it this way with the bean right at the side of the cup because we can really see what's going on uh, with throughout this uh, germination process of it starting to sprout. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now um, from there, put that in your week six, so then you'll have two pictures. One for last week and one for this week. Okay, and we'll keep working on this for a little while longer. All right, after that, we are going down to our week six activity here. Now, this week six activity will look familiar to some of you, okay? Because I did an activity a bit like this, but we actually drew one ourselves, but most of you guys weren't at school. So a lot of you haven't done this, so I wanted to cover it again. Those of you who have already drawn um, the cross section of a flower like this, um, great, you can just relabel this and you should be able to remember these words a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna read through these instructions and we'll go from there. Okay, so before we label this, the very first part of it is um, watch the video on the specialist website. Okay, so I'm gonna play that for you guys now. Watch that carefully, it's actually, um, uh, a Canadian video, it's a little bit older now, but it's still talking a lot about um, tomatoes, um, their flowers, and in the case of this um, video, they're talking about the flowers being pollinated by uh, bumblebees. Now, 
while they're talking about bumblebees, the same principle applies for any kind of bee. So don't worry about that. I'm going to play it now. Let's have a watch. Hi, I'm Earth Ranger Giovanna, and I'm here at the fantastic hot house to talk to you about bumblebees. Now you're probably wondering, what do bees and tomatoes have in common? Well, bumblebees actually play a very important role in the production of tomatoes. Here to tell me more is Dr. Purdy, who's been studying bees for over a decade. Thanks, Giovanna. You're right. Bumblebees do have a very special role when it comes to producing tomatoes. Their role is to pollinate the flowers on the tomato plants. See, pollination happens when a brightly colored powder is moved from one part of the flower to another. The pollen is produced in the male part of the flower, which is called the anther, and it's moved to the female part of the flower, which is called the stigma. It takes one tiny grain of pollen to make each seed in the fruit or vegetable. For some plants, like grain and corn, the pollen is carried by the wind, but for many plants, like fruit and vegetables, Bumblebees are responsible for the pollination. That's very interesting. So can you tell me some of the other foods that bumblebees pollinate? Yes, bumblebees are important for pollination of raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, almonds, watermelon, pumpkins, and many others, just to name a few. And they also help to pollinate other crops like clover when it's grown for seed, or canola grown for cooking oil. So does that mean without pollination, we'd have trouble growing enough food? That's right, Giovanna. We'd have grain and corn, but we depend on bumblebees for pollination of many fruits and vegetables. Remember that I said that one tiny grain of pollen is required for each seed in a fruit or vegetable. That means that if a flower doesn't get pollen or doesn't get enough pollen, there'd be less crop to harvest and the fruit would be smaller. We depend on pollination by bumblebees for much of our food supply. Wild plants and the wild animals that feed on them depend on bumblebees for pollination too. The problem is some bees have been disappearing and all bees are under stress. Do we know what's causing this? Yes, recent research tells us that there are many factors. New bee diseases coming into our area, competition for food and nesting areas, loss and fragmentation of habitat. Pollution, pesticides, and climate change are also thought to be threats. So by the sound of it, there are a lot of things that are making it harder for bees to survive, which is why we need to do more research to get to the bottom of this extremely important issue. That's right, Giovanna. We do need to know a lot more about bumblebees. This is why it's so important for Earth Rangers to join forces and support research so that we can better protect bumblebees. We're raising money to help scientists study habitat needs, pollination habits, and population sizes of wild bumblebees living in Western Canada, like the Western bumblebee. This will help scientists understand bee diversity and pollination behavior. So what are you waiting for, Earth Rangers? Let's do our part to help bring back the wild. Okay, now that you've seen that video, there's quite a bit of information in it. Okay, you hopefully have learned a few new things. Okay, now part of that video, they did actually point out at some of the different parts of the flowers. Okay, and they actually talked about how pollination actually occurs. All right. Now, what we're going to do with this activity here is we're actually going to label it, okay? So by labeling it, we can then make sure we understand what all the parts do, okay? Now, I've written up the top here that flowers will only turn into fruit if they are pollinated. So this flower would stay a flower until it dies unless it gets pollinated. If it gets pollinated, it will turn into fruit, okay? Now, flower is pollinated when pollen moves from the anther, the male or boy part of the flower, to the stigma, the female girl part of the flower, okay? So flowers actually have both boy and girl parts. It's a bit funny to think of, but that's just how it is. All right, now we need to write the names of all of these parts. So you can probably tell already that this part here is the petal, okay? So um, you're gonna actually just write them up here. 
but I will um, I will do that a bit differently because I'm doing it on the computer. Let's, I'm gonna just flick over to this one. Okay, so here's my flower. I'm going to grab the uh, petal here. Okay, and I'm gonna put that up here. All right, so there is the petal, all right? Now, after that, what else do we have? We've got, ooh, down here, another easy one, a stem. Okay, the stem of the flower is just down the bottom there. Easy. Okay. Now, we have got a few other little bits and pieces up here. We have, let's see, uh, the anther. The anther is the part with the pollen on it. Okay. The anther is this bit just here. Okay. All right. And then we've got the stigma. The stigma is this little part at the top of the flower. It looks like a little bottom, I think. Okay. And this part is actually going to, stigma is going to be written right up there and pointing to this part here. So a flower gets pollinated when some pollen moves from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower. Okay. All right. Now, after a piece of pollen moves from the anther to the stigma, it goes down this long tube here. This part here is the style. Okay, let's put that one in. The style. Okay, so that's that long tube. Okay, now that's pretty good. Now the anthers are being supported by these little spindly bits here, and they are the filament. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, now after that, we only have two more left. We have the ovary and the ovules. Now the ovary is the part that holds these little like eggs. I call them eggs, they're not really eggs, but they uh, look like them, these little like seed things in there. They are all inside the ovary and their real name is an ovule, okay. So I'll take the ovule and put it up there. I did that wrong, let me try again. All right, okay. Now here are the answers for your work today. I've just given you all the answers. So by watching this video, you will know the answers. But these words here are prime words to appear on a test. In fact, it's very possible that for a test later on, you'll have a flower and you need to label these parts. So I want you actually to try and remember some of these ones, okay? Especially the most important ones here, which are going to be the anther and the stigma. Now in class the other day, some of you who were here um, will remember that we actually had, I actually had cut some flowers in half. This is like called a cross section where you cut a flower in half and you look inside it. I actually have one here and uh, this is the flower that we cut in half. Now let's actually have a little bit of a look here. Okay, now you can see We've got these parts here. Um, the anthers are quite big on this flower and they're covered in pollen. You can see all of these bits of pollen on there. Now, if some pollen gets from here and gets onto the stigma of this flower, the pollen will go down this tube, okay, down the tube, down the style, all the way down into the ovary. And you can see here all these little seed things down there. These are the little ovules inside the flowers. Now I've only cut off this half of it, there's more behind that half, okay? So this is just a regular flower. Now flowers can be all different shapes, but all the flowers will have these basic parts, okay? So once you've got all of these, um, once you can see these bits here, you can actually understand what all of their jobs are. All right, now I'm just gonna switch back to this and we'll have a little bit, I'm just gonna do a quick little summary on this. This is a bit of a complicated idea, so. Here we go. All right, so let's say that there's a flower there. The flower's job is to try and turn into fruit. That's what a flower wants. But a flower is only gonna stay there, just a regular flower, until it gets pollinated. One day, a bug or a butterfly or something, often the example in the video we just watched was bees, uh, a bee will come along 
and will come in and, you know, start to get the nectar and do all the things bees do. And they might wind up looking a bit like this. Okay, they get covered in pollen. You can see all these little bits of pollen all stuck on this bee here, all stuck over. They get covered in pollen just by accident. Okay, just by accident. And so while this bee is flying around, it accidentally moves some pollen from the anther. I'll go back to my labeled one. Moves some pollen off the antler and gets it onto the stigma of either the same flower or a different flower. Now, when those bits of pollen get there, they go down the style and they fertilize all these little ovules in here. These little bits here will turn into the seeds of the fruit, of a tomato fruit or whatever fruit it is. Okay, all fruit used to be a flower. Okay, now if 20 pieces of pollen go down there, then you will have 20 seeds in your fruit. If 40 seeds go down here, then you'll have 40 seeds in your fruit and the fruit will be bigger because it's got more seeds in it. All right. So generally, the more the flower is pollinated, the bigger and the healthier the fruit is going to be. All right. This part would then swell up. Okay. And become a brand new uh, piece of fruit. Now, what I'm actually going to, um, what I'm actually gonna do here, yeah, I'm actually going to um, run a little video of a piece of fruit changing. So you can say, what, flowers turn into fruit? No, they really do. And I'll show you a video so that you can see it. Um, have a look at this. Okay, now that I've proven to you that flowers do turn into fruit and you understand all the parts of the flower, your job is to label your flower, color your flower in. I don't mind what color you choose. You can use the color schemes of the flower we used at school, but um, it might be easiest if you use the anthers as orange because that's often the color of the pollen. Okay, and from there, you should be on the right track. We're back in our activity sheet. Next week, we'll be looking at bees themselves, okay? But for now, that is your job for the week. Please remember to be watering your, um, watering your, not that one, watering your bean. Now, I uh, noticed my tissue was still a bit wet this morning, so I didn't actually give mine any water today. I've only been doing one spoon and I didn't want it to get too soaking. If the tissue is still wet, then just, just leave it. We don't want it to get too moldy or brown. You can actually see already some brown bits starting to get here because, I mean, let's face it, beans aren't really supposed to grow in cups, but this will still work for this purpose. Okay, so that um, that is your job. Keep watering your bean. Fill out your fill out your sheet and then um, I will be collecting all of these booklets so I can see your work okay I will be collecting all of your booklets booklets at the end of it so we've got eight weeks of work here and so make sure your work is neat and careful uh, so I can look at how you've gone anyways boys and girls I hope you guys have all learned something 
And uh, I hope your flowers are growing, not your flowers, your beans are growing. If it's not, don't stress. Every year, there's a lots of them that don't grow. So don't worry if yours isn't. All right, thanks a lot, boys and girls, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.